Hello. Hey there, this is a <clears throat> quick tour of the pivoting swinging extruder doing a larger object so you can see the movement. Um, I think an angle where you can see both of them going on. Maybe this. Yeah, that works kind of good. It's about as far back as I can get on the table and brace this camera phone. Sorry, I don't have a good camera. I might get one for this kind of stuff. Um, anyway, just keeps the Bowden short and it keeps it so that the pathing is pretty much dictated by the filament. Um, the curvature of the Bowden is dictated by the filament and extruder swings back and forth and pivots at its angle as objects rise. It kind of tilts back so that the um, extruder can just be mounted at that kind of mid-height and work. But it could be shorter if I uh, did an extruder carriage and controlled its height with a stepper, which is possible in the controller. Is. The control board, the duet, has a headers to do that and the rep rep firmware has options for that to set that up pretty easily. Extruder pivots just on an M5 screw. Well it's actually on this kind of post thing that I found from an old CPU heatsink mount, but this whole fits an M5 screw and some and that and some washers make a little vertical post pivot and then use a couple of bearings mounted on that L bracket or the C bracket that holds the uh, extruder motor. It might not make any sense, but I'm talking about this stuff up here. M5 nut, or M5 screw, nut down below, C bracket, some bearings in there, um, all printed, all like, it, it, it works okay. It's kind of the first prototype. Well, second prototype. First prototype is this wonky shit over here. Um, just kind of pivoted back and forth with the um, threaded rod actually pivoting on the table on a little, on a little plastic donut to, or a little plastic uh, whatever, end, end cap. <clears throat> Keep it from grinding into the table, which it did before I made that. So anyway. Printing this out to <clears throat> very corners are out at like 190 millimeter diameter print area. And this is a mini coastal frame, but with the different linear motion and the different carriages and the different corners. I mean, it's kind of a mini coastal frame. It's the same extrusions, but the motors are mounted closer for the pulleys to be mounted closer to the frame for there to be less cantilever from the pushing contact to the belt mount points just to keep everything tighter, more accurate. So, um, you know, mini console basic dimensions, but modified a bit. And because of that, and the way I did the carriages with the bit of overhang, so it can just come right underneath it, because on the tall one, when it's up here, and these are down, you can do more than the, tw they say 20 degrees is kind of the minimum you want on a delta. But that's really when it's at the low point and it's trying to control its distance to the far edge of the build area. And in that area, when it's moving down here, you, you don't want more than like 20 degrees because it's controlling the positioning. This one, the, the far carriage is controlling the positioning. But the one up here that's at the extreme angle, it's kind of just controlling the height in the other two are controlling the positioning of the effector. It doesn't move much, and if you have stepping that'll do it, which 1 16th stepping well, seems to be able to handle this just fine, then it's not asking a lot of it as far as, um, it doesn't seem to affect it with uh, binding in the kinematics on the arms so that when I've moved it around by hand, it felt okay and it prints okay. Um, these. This case here was printed, same one, 
but that one's printing in white. This one printed in the orange Hatchbox PLA that just prints beautifully, and see it gets a good print out on this uh, edge. Um, focus, phone, crappy camera as hell. Um, it's a nice print out there. It's not bad, and that adds, that that's you know it, with that thing going on where the arm is only at like maybe three to five degree angle from 90 so like or from zero or whatever you want to call it just hanging straight down from the carriage um, but I think that the 20 degree limitation on the Delta is is for the low for the, the arm with the farthest reach and the arm with the least reach there you can see that's really way less than 20 and it prints just fine in that area um, so those of you with deltas, if you want to make carriages that allow belt clearance, you can print right down underneath and the car and the effector can be like right up against the belt pretty much. I mean, I could print with it touching the belt um, because it's got a 20 millimeter from center diameter to the arm points plus 40 millimeter spacing. So 20 millimeters from center to the center of this 40 millimeter, it's like 35 from center or something out there and and that kind of limits um, what you can do because as you're, as you're coming around the very edge of it you don't want to bang this into the belt and catch it that would suck um, you're not going to get good prints out of the very edge of the radius if you have that happen so it's got to just just not touch the belts barely and everything else is good and I had a crabby first layer because I haven't really set the the Z0 and the infrared offset perfectly so it's off by like 0.08 or something and kind of makes a bit of a chunky first layer, but it's going okay now. And I'll be able to hopefully complete the white case for the silver and white um, original multicost prototype. Anyway, there you go, there's a little tour of the uh, Multicause Unit 2 and the swinging extruder and the larger build area that the Multicause design allows. The carriages, the bushings, the super cheap linear motion. That's like, I had the material left over, but if you bought this off the internet, you bought a foot of quarter inch Delrin rod and cut your little 10 millimeter or half inch little sections. Cost you between like five and ten bucks for all the material for that and then the the printed parts are not a lot. Um, screws and stuff, that's probably the most expensive bit. And you know you could use cheaper screws than the, the black hex cap ones. You could just use some Phillips head or even flathead machine screws that are pretty cheap. Um, I may do a minimal cost, minim, a minimalty cost or whatever. Basically, it'll be this, but without the swinging extruder, with as few screws, as few parts, as cheap as humanly possible for this design. And I think the bill of sale might come in or under, maybe under four hundred dollars, which would be pretty cool. Um, might even be, it might might even be able to do it cheaper than I mean it's pretty inexpensive um, even with good motors and a super good control board with cheap linear motion you know it makes it so that the steppers you know good ones 60 bucks for a set could be paying top top price um, control boards like 120 for a good to do at Wi-Fi or 130 might be 100 130 or 140. What did I pay? I paid full price. Um, but I can't remember because there was a lot of numbers involved in this whole thing. Um, anyway, yeah, like screws, belt pulleys, all the little things like that are like kind of the most expensive bits and pieces in, in this Delta design. Since you get rid of the, the rails, cheap rails, I mean $85 rails with only two channels. Just no bueno, man. That's like 
it's just a bunch of poorly made inaccurate bearings in two channels that were meant to be run horizontally, not vertically, because they need to load with gravity to have the accuracy for that design with two channels. You need four channels in preload to do a vertical rail, um, which this is. I mean, you got four points of contact top, four points of contact bottom for eight total points of contact, all like geometrically opposing and preloaded with the set screws and using the natural uh, give of the whatever plastic you use to print your, your carriage arms, that becomes kind of the part of the preload adjustment. The screws set it and then, I mean, I haven't adjusted these in the, well, this is the new one. I haven't adjusted these at all since it's been running, but, but this one over here, man, the linear motion has been the most reliable thing in two months of operation. I've like checked them a couple times, but they didn't need anything. Um, just work. Extrusion, on the other hand, that's that's why this is going on because that's been a total pain in the butt. And then bed mounting, um, I came up with a pretty simple bed mounting. Uh, a little two-hole, uh, what they call a, uh, what's it called, like a repair bracket or just a a patch bracket. It's just got two holes in it, stainless steel. Mount one to the frame, tilt it over. Mount the other one, you know, put the hole where you need it for the bed post and I, I tapped the holes in the heat bed so it has its own M4 posts that are screwed into it with then a nut tightening those in so they're not sticking up so they don't make the glass raised up. They're, they're, fluff, they're flush or below the level of the aluminum top. And then, you know, with a little spring and it's kind of just like a normal, easily adjustable to get it level after you've heated it up for any kind of warping with heat. Um, and then print. And I did an okay job to get this print going, but it could have done a better job. First layer was kind of messed up. So three of those around the edge of the delta, and good to go for bed leveling, which it's kind of the most minimalist. I'm gonna I'm gonna change them a little bit to hopefully get some thumb screws on there, but there's not a lot of clearance for the from the extrusion. Um, but it's pretty minimalist and cheap. So with the screws, the nuts, the springs, the little plates, um, six or seven bucks worth of parts to level the bed. Not bad. And it's all metal, and it uses the rail as a heat sink, which gets warm but not hot, not enough to mess with the uh, corners at all. Maybe, I guess it's like 35C right now. I mean, it's just like, if it was like a, you know, it, it's not, it's just not that warm, but it's warmer than a freezing apartment, so. They're probably like 35C on the rails from the conductivity going through the M4 screws into the plate, down to the rail, and then also the mo any kind of heat coming from the motors, which... Um, actually, they're a bit warmer. I don't even want to put a fan down there. Alright, here's the tour. Time to do some upgrades.